I'm going to be building a coal deck. I built this deck offline. So I'm just going to assemble it. Um, so the main thing I'm going to do first and foremost is I'm just going to group these because it's going to be a lot easier. So I'm just going to gather those guys up. And then I'm going to search. So first thing we need is coal. Got a coal. I should copy and paste it. That's a best practice as well. Um, <clears throat> so, I don't know. Uh, I'm posting tonight. You'll see it on our YouTube channel later tonight. I played my first week of the AIL tournament um, last night and played against M. Bowers, who's a very powerful and good player. And uh, got beat pretty bad, and it, it's a it was a fallen deck. I was also playing a fallen deck, which tells me that fallen are um, probably pretty prevalent in tournament play right now. And so I think you have to be building decks to fight the fallen, and then have good spot removal. Um, one of the things I'm I want to test this deck against is not only wide decks but taller decks. Uh, I'm not playing a lot of spot removal. I just got done saying you have to have good spot removal, but I'm not going to play a lot of spot removal in this deck to start because I'm not sure if Cole's onboard ability just with other pinging that I have in the deck um, will ultimately be enough that I don't need like a fester style removal or uh, you know a molten gold or something like that, which would require me to go to a second illusion or a second nature die. Um, so I'm not going to start there. I'm going to start with knowing what I think it's really good against, which is wide, uh, wide decks that are, um, you know, trying to, um, you know, trying to go wider than you can go. And, and certainly that's what I experienced last night against Koji. Uh, and I don't think that's going to change. So we'll kind of go through some of the card choices in this deck uh, a little bit later here i just want to get to the correct place summon false demon uh thanks for joining me if you're here say hello love knowing people are watching uh looks like pokemon and verker are here um cool of you guys to be here <laughs> i i um Gonna go one of on the false demon. I should still do best practice because I want to build some tonight, possibly. Um, then I want a salamander monk. So salamander monk is sort of doing the same thing that fallen does. Um, not quite as good, obviously. Fallen is fallen, but. A little more proactive um and so I, I do like this card quite a bit we got a shadow hound and we're actually going to run three of on this because the focus ability is so good so, so basically when we get the shadow hounds um it, it allows you to deal a point of damage to a target unit, and then if you have focus two, you can deal another point of damage. Well, I was playing a deck last week, and you may have seen it on our stream or on YouTube, which was Mayoni with Rhinos, and I was trying to focus the Rhinos quickly. Uh, and I was surprised how quickly I could do that. Um, I'm not playing open memories, because it would require you to play Charm in this deck to do that, but uh, I think I can still be pretty active in pulling Shadow Hounds, and even just a singular focus Shadow Hound. Turns each of your shadow hounds into an expensive flash archer. They're still really good because they're three ones instead of one ones. And um, I think that just goes to show like I can still scale up to that a big opponent threat we were talking about. So um yeah, so I'm gonna stick with the three shadow hounds for now. Um I am still gonna play a reasonably sized threat, but understand that if your opponent's playing guilt link. Like, Guilt Link is just going to destroy these. These Battle Seers are not going to survive. But I like them because they have Alert, and Quick Strike is also very functional on the opposite end of it when you want to attack so that uh, you can you can use them proactively that way as well. 
Um, so I, I think they're good. I don't think that uh, they're the best card in the deck, but they're certainly good enough. Uh, everybody is knows how good River Scald is. Um, you know, I learned a pretty valuable lesson. In uh, did I get some pumpkin pie? No. So Frank, uh, this is funny. One of the girl when the girls when when Betsy went and got all the pumpkin pie from Stouffer's Cafe here in Lincoln, local bakery uh, and breakfast joint. She loaded them in the back of her car, and when it was time to get out, Bets like the girls decided to open the back and weren't paying attention, and one of the pies came out, and that was it got damaged, and so obviously like we ended up having to take the apple pie that got damaged in order to give somebody a non-damaged pie. So no, no pumpkin pie for me tomorrow. Um, that's all right. I don't need it. Um, uh, <laughs> one thing COVID did was, uh, let me lose a little bit of weight and I'm going to just kind of keep working off of that. So, um, you know, I'll take my wins where I can get them, but we're gonna play three expand energy. Uh, reason is Cole's ability I just want to be adding cards to hand for either playability or to use Cole's slash ability because the site action is unexhaustible. So unless my opponent actually exhausts the Phoenix born, I'm able to um, continue to use this ability and expand energy just gives me fuel for that. The same with skull drawing a card gives me fuel for that. Um, abundance, which I showed earlier, gives me two more fuel for that. So I just want to be actively drawing cards as much as possible in this deck just to use Cole's ability pretty much on every turn that I get. Um, that's the idea. Now, Cole can only target units, so, um, you know, but it does say that if there's no units, then you can go to the Phoenix Born. So being able to switch over to direct to the face uh, if we're controlling all the units uh, doesn't seem like a bad plan. Um, I am going to play two Hidden Powers. I'm not a big fan of this card in Reborn. I think it's okay. Um, we'll kind of talk about it a little bit here. So it's a dice fixer. It gives me a draw card. That's why I like it in coal. Um, but it costs me a die. So like I'm spending one to basically meditate five and get to draw a card. It's not terrible. It's not as good as it was obviously when it was a recurring sort of thing back in 1.0. Uh, but obviously dice recursion was broken. So um, that's why we don't have it in reborn and uh, happy to, to accept that fate <laughs> for hidden power. Uh, that is a card that is on my list of potential cards after playing um, playing some games with this. Um, whether or not I keep it will be uh, just really up to game outcomes. Playing a Mist Typhoon, same situation here. Uh, two dice, deal one to all your opponent's units seems super solid. And uh, being able to draw another card fuels Slash, fuels Gameplay. Uh, so you can see a kind of a recurring theme. I've got pretty much every card I'm playing is trying to draw me cards uh, and then, you know, go from there. So there there are a few cards that obviously don't do that and will I will run out of hand. It's not like I can play indefinitely. Um, but, I mean, Cole's loyalty card is 100 blades. Uh, also a very good card. Deal one damage to target Phoenix Born. Deal one damage to all opponent's units. Draw a card, two dice. This is doing. This is basically Miss Typhoon on crack, right? So um, we're just gonna we're gonna take advantage of this also. Um, and, and again, I just think we have enough direct damage that even larger threats we're going to be able to pressure those down uh, without needing to do uh, direct spot removal. But I do add um, I do add crescendo in here as a two of uh, just in case. And this is a card that depending on the meta and how it shapes up that may drop down to a one of for me, but uh, I think it's fine as a, you know, deal one damage to a unit I control to deal three damage. Like you can, you can kill a monk salamander monk to make a salamander monk spirit um, and deal three damage to something. Or I can play it on, you know, something like a scald who I don't care about living or dying so much after I've played it. Uh, or I can play it on the battle seer and then obviously if my opponent can't deal with the battle seer then like i just recover so um i think it's fine crescendo's fine here 
Uh, but whether or not it's a needed as a two of or whether it's needed as a three of is just a or going down to a one of really is going to be matchup dependent. And then we're going to play some figures in the fog. Basically, what I wanted with this card was just a decent way um, to stop an attacker that I couldn't deal with at, in a given moment. Um, for a single die, being able to react with a single illusion die and um, say, nope, let's exhaust that guy. He's no longer attacking. Like, it just gives me that added control element to still play my game the way I want to play it and be on time. So really what we're going to live off of is Salamander Monks, False Demons, which we'll get the Conjurations out and we'll talk about those. So Salamander Monk Spirit and Salamander Monk. The monk has two. Spirit has three, if I remember right. Yep, I was right. Okay. All right. Now we've got to get false demon. The false demon is a choice here. He's a two. Um, I'll break down really quick. Just two attack, two life. Works really well with Crescendo. Um, does a point of damage when he comes in. So if I've got a four defense unit that I don't want to take the demon directly into, I can um, attack another unit that maybe is more favorable in the combat. But when I summon the demon, I can turn around and ping the four unit. And then when I, I can use crescendo to ping the demon once before attacking, kill the four unit and potentially kill the other unit that I'm attacking into. And so it allows me to, to sort of play tempo. Um, and I, I think that he's just probably really, really good. So, um, you know, this is old flash archer, right? On a bigger body costs more, obviously, uh, I mean, false demons, two dice versus one die of flash, but, um, you know, still very reasonably priced unit for what we're trying to do. Um, so then we got the shadow hounds and the shadow hounds are, are one of my favorites. Um, I just think these guys are really cool and I've not played with them up to this point. So I'm really excited to play with them. But, uh, obviously we talked about the book, book getting focused does, ping damage to units, but then um, this ability concealed, the, this unit cannot be targeted by attack spells, abilities, or dice powers and opponent controls, and this unit cannot be guarded against, means that uh, I can snipe whatever I want on the board with, with a Shadow Hound. Now he's expensive. I mean, three dice is not a small price to pay. It's an expensive price to pay for this. Uh, and especially when you consider that it's, you know, going to be 60% of my illusion dice for the turn, and I have other illusion costs throughout, uh, such as false demons, and uh, Salamander Monk is going to come off of um, uh, sympathy, so I don't have to worry about the Salamander Monk competing. But you've also got the Battle Seer, which has a single dice cost, and uh, you've got the Mist Typhoon that's got a single dice cost. So like it is theoretically probable it's theoretically possible and pretty probable that I'm going to have a hard time summoning the shadow hound. We're going to see. Um, but I'm not really on the play trying to actively play shadow hound, even round one. Um, you know, there may be a reason to, and so we'll have to wait and see, but the goal here is to first five with a shadow hound a resonance and then abundance false demon and salamander monk and so the rest of the cards are just going to come to us uh through all the draw mechanisms so abundance is going to draw us two cards around um you know we can in theory use the additional uh we could use additional resonances i'm only playing a single copy of resonance is that i don't remember if that's correct let me make sure nope i'm supposed to have three copies of resonance Oh, I do. Yep. So I just moved it up. So, um, you know, once we get, once we get to focus two on the shadow hound, 
the other residents can come over to abundance just in case the game is going really long for some reason and you can't close it like if we can't close it and the game is going long then i can just abundance an opponent to death um and and still continue to do the coal things right so um that's sort of how the deck functions it's got a pretty simple game plan whether or not it will get there again something like what we saw in the ail tournament i don't know um I think it's positioned to fight it well. I just don't know whether you can keep up with the tempo that the Fallen deck can build. Because make no mistake, the Fallen deck is a tempo deck. And um, yeah, that, that just becomes hard. But, but having monks helps and having uh, lots of ping damage to remove uh, threats from the board that are, that are the most uh, threatening. Um, and I know that sounds crazy when you talk about a bunch of 1-1s, but like... Uh, should have been removing EVs. When you listen to my commentary, uh, Chant of Violinist was something I should have been removing act actively in my game yesterday, and I wasn't. And so this just gives me so many different ways to sort of dig out of even if I make a mistake on the wrong target or my opponent sort of baits me into, you know, pinging the wrong target and then plays the bigger threat that I can still ping down. So um yeah uh this this is a this card here is definitely one that um could be just about anything so i'm open to ideas on that if somebody thinks that that card is not great there but i do like the idea of um you know all of these things shadowhound i don't think shadowhound can be targeted by gravity link but false demon can and so you kind of want to play false demon force them to gravity link your false demon and then Battle Seer, right? So the Gravity Link's used up, and now Battle Seer's on the field. Can alert Battle um, Fallen if you want it to, or can you know be proactively pinging to the Phoenixborn for three and uh, continuing to pressure uh, the game state. So yeah, yeah, that's that's the deck. 